mass arrests from child marriage crackdown trigger Indian women to protest. So let's be clear. They're not protesting against child marriage. They're protesting against the crackdown on child marriage. But it is not, and this was very interesting to me. There's many different angles here. Since February 3rd, more than 2,400 people in the Indian state of Assam have been arrested, which include husbands and relatives of alleged child brides, along with priests who conducted the marriages. Hundreds of women have pr protested against the measure initiated by the Assam state government. Uh, Himantha Bishwa uh, Sarma, Assam's chief minister, that's basically like the governor, stated that the government received police reports regarding child marriages that have named more than 8,100 people. He also told the authorities to act with zero tolerance. For context, although it's illegal for girls under 18 to marry in India, the practice persists in many parts of the country due to poverty and patriarchal, patriarchal, patriarchal traditions. However, there are exceptions for Muslims in the country who mostly get married under Muslim personal law, and it is legal for girls to marry once they reach puberty. So for people who don't know, there are different laws for different religions in India. So if you're a Muslim in India, you have different laws available to you and you can get married younger than everyone else. Government data reports that more than two out of every 10 girls are married before they turn 18. The protesting women said the men were arrested by by the authorities or were the primary breadwinners for their families and that they were completely dependent on them. Quote, my husband works in the fields and I'm completely dependent on him, one woman told reporters, adding that she doesn't know how to seek legal help since she only has a primary school level of education. Dee is bringing up a very good point. She's saying this is why it is important for women to be educated and financially independent. So... Oh my goodness. There's so much going on here. There, there's so much going on here. And it really, the more I looked into this story, I, be, I became very, very interested. So for context, Assam is a state in the very Eastern edge of India that borders Bangladesh. And so it has a very high Muslim population, especially in comparison to many other states in India. And there's a lot of tension with the Muslim population there. Now, the chief minister of this state, Assam, is part of the BJP, which is a very Hindu nationalist party that takes a very hardline stance against the Muslim population in general. And so there, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of context here because he's having a very firm crackdown on child marriage in the state and he's saying, we we're only hitting the tip of the iceberg. We're going to keep doing this crackdown until um, a, we have to keep, we're going to keep this crackdown going on until the next elections in the state, which were reportedly 2026. And he said some, a quote along the lines of like, for us to ban or banish child marriage for future generations, one generation will have to suffer. And so I guess the idea is to create a strong message and a strong disincentive towards engaging in these practices. Now, there's a lot of people who have come out against this, including people who are part of the supposed liberal parties that are part of the Congress party, for example. And I don't know how I feel about the way that they talked about this issue. The, the way that Congress is talking, the, the representatives that I saw quoted, the way that they were talking about this issue is so gross to me. Like, they are essentially excusing a lot of what happens, but then they also bring up, and then they, they do kind of like a, it's not exactly what about is, but they're like, oh, this has been an issue for so long. Why are you taking action just right now? Da, da, da. Like what's so special about right now? Da, da, da. Do you have an agenda? I mean, every, every politician has an agenda. And then the other thing that they say, and this is a criticism that I don't know how true this is, but the criticism is basically like, um, we don't, 
know how the the how verifiable that these cases are like these mass arrests that you've done how much information do we actually have against all of these individuals how much information do we actually have against all these defendants or are you just rounding people up unjustifiably like how credible are your claims about all these people engaging in child marriage which that's a that's a better concern or criticism to have but then the other criticism that i've seen people in the opposing parties parties opposing the bjp said was oh well these cases are too old we shouldn't you know worry about super old cases da 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 if someone was married one or two years ago and now they have a happy family you're splitting up a family and i'm like what one or two years ago that person could still be a child and it would still be illegal under most of the other um areas of the penal code in india but the only reason why it's different is because it's under muslim personal law so if this was any other child if this was a child from any other background this would be firmly illegal but because it's under Muslim personal law, you're making these excuses. Um, so it's, Armin, what do you think about everything I just explained to you? No, those are very um, good points. I think this is, a, this is a good comment by Katie I wanted to highlight. You want to read that? Yeah, Katie is saying, these women have been raised to uphold these horrible traditions and patriarchal values. It's all they have known. It's what happens when you take away the only thing people know in their lives. And that's very true. And we do have to acknowledge the fact that these women are dependent on their husbands because of their communities, because of their societies, because they were taken out of education to get married at a very early age. Mm. They are fully dependent on these men. And this is the thing. The reality is these women are genuinely put in a really bad position because of this. That's a fact. But also, that the mean idea that we shouldn't crack down on child marriage. Also, if you approach a child and then you're with them and you're having sexual relationships with them, and now they're an adult, and now you want to let go of that because they are adults, you basically are allowing grooming. Because, I mean, you, you, a child's mind is very flexible and it's very impressionable, and you could make them. You know, it, it's a, it's a, it's, it's could, it, this could be a, a Stockholm syndrome situation. So if you allow that, if you don't go after it because now they're happy, that is basically the definition of grooming because grooming requires saying, making your victims agree with the conditions. Yeah, go on. I'm sorry for interrupting. I just got really passionate about something. Mm. So this freaking, I can't remember the name of this person. But someone from the Congress party was basically saying, oh, well, if it happened one or two years ago, why are we what are we doing about this now, blah, blah, blah. The chief minister from the BJP said something that's true. He's like, child marriage is R-A-P-E. Mm -hmm. I agree with him. And I can't say the word because of YouTube. Child marriage is R-A-P-E. So this freaking dumbass from Congress is like, oh, well, if they have a happy family now, we're splitting up a family or whatever they said. I could pull up the exact quote if we want to steel man them. But um, if, if you're going to dismiss that this happened just because it happened one or two years ago, you're dismissing an RAPE that happened that recently. You're just going to like, what? What do you think about this comment from Katie? Katie is saying BJP is certainly not consistent on this issue. A couple of years ago, a BJP politician suggested child marriage is the solution to unmarried couples eloping. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's insane. Um, yeah, I don't, ex I mean, do I really expect the BJP to be consistent on anything? Any political party. I don't expect any political party to be consistent on anything, let alone the largest political party in the world. Um, so, um, that's not surprising to me at all. Um, but this, the, 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 the dynamics of this situation going on here is really, it, it's, it's driving me crazy. <laughs> um, I, 
I don't know. This is I'm just I was I was very frustrated by the for lack of a better term reactionary reaction from the parties that oppose the BJP. Like I oppose the BJP. But that doesn't mean that maybe they could have I don't know how you would approach the situation in a better way because I mean there are fam- there are people that are going to be further pushed into poverty because of this. I don't like that. But people like the excuses the excuses from the so-called left-leaning people over this issue is disgusting it's absolutely reprehensible god just freaking embarrassing (laughs) i apologize that's okay that's good yeah um oh d is oh my goodness i I think she might be right. Thea saying the truth is to stop this, you'll have to break up families. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's complicated. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.